So here you go. It's Monday. It's 9 p.m. Just gone. It's the start of a beautiful week. Thank you so much for joining me live here. If you're listening on the audio experience, massive shout out to you. Hugely appreciate you. As always, drop me a tweet at Acts on this TV at Ross A. Grant. Let me know where you're listening from. Um, I had people like tweeting me recently on the audio experience that's on iTunes and uh, and Stitcher, like from abroad, like really far away, like you know South America and uh, crazy places like that. I don't know how they've stumbled across it, but they have uh, they have found it. Alex says her exciting news is she signed up to a new agency. Congratulations, Alex. Hopefully it'll bring you everything uh, that you require from it. Plenty of auditions, I hope. So tonight, folks, a um, couple of things. First of all, a little bit of housekeeping. I put a new edition of my weekly vlog out this morning. It's called Sitting on Top of the World. It's episode five. All right, Steve. Steve Goodwain is here. Um, it's great. I'm going to play you a 60-second uh, little sample of it. If you've not seen this yet, oh, man, you just check out my golf skills in this. Literally ridiculous. Um, check this out. It's winding up. Let's go. 10 reps with each one before we take them in. Oh, it's pumping up these guns. How did you get Mo Farah on the front of that? You're having a rock bottom right now. You won't know it, but it's actually gonna be the best thing that's probably ever happened to you in your life because a few months from now, you're gonna just be a miles, miles better person. Thought it'd be easy to get me on an Uber. Maybe it's not that easy. Hopefully I've put the pin on the right side of the hospital. One, two, <laughs> three, neck and knock go. And I'm glad we've shared this moment with Kenny. Kenny! <laughs> How are you doing? Excellent. So this is as far as we can go with the camera. Uh, we're gonna go in and have a good time and we'll see <laughs> and we'll and we'll see you guys after we've had a lovely time. There was a 60 second clip of the like 21 minute uh, episode. So if you are watching live now or you're listening on the replay, get yourself over to facebook.com forward slash watch Ross or search for watch Ross on YouTube. And I'm doing a particular thing on YouTube where if you subscribe on YouTube um, and you leave a comment, you can leave as many comments as you want, like one on each video or whatever. There's five episodes up so far. If you're an actor, um, I'm going to pay, I'm going to draw one person at random at the end of the year, I'm going to pay for your spotlight for 2018. If you're not an actor, I'm going to get you a gift for 150 quid or the equivalent price of a spotlight subscription um, just for subscribing and commenting on the videos over on YouTube. Um, so if you want to go over to YouTube, search for Watch Ross, all one word. You're only going to find it right now because it's a new vlog. If you type Watch Ross, all one word in um on uh, on youtube if you type hashtag watch ross or one word you'll definitely find it but subscribe to the channel leave a comment and i will be doing a draw at the end of the year so that's point one um point two what did i want to say well point two actually is really what tonight's scope's about it's all about the future of Act on this TV. Now, if you're here for the first time, you've stumbled across this, most of you guys know what it is. Act on this TV is a website that I set up eight years ago to help actors get further in their acting careers faster. It basically is a site that's full of content such as podcasts, um, video broadcasts, uh, video like multi camera video interviews with some of the greatest names in the acting industry over here in the UK, some American people as well. Um, so it's people, you know, famous actors, casting directors, a shitload of casting directors, agents, producers, writers, etc., etc. And really, it's I set it up to get you guys access to people who you would struggle to get access to on your own starting out as an actor. So you can literally ask questions, submit questions before I do these interviews, and I ask those questions questions you might be too afraid to ask I ask them to these people and get you the answers hopefully that you need thus you act on that information that's why it's called acts on this I get the questions answered and you get the information that you then go and act on um, however um, I mean I've interviewed loads of people there's 400 hours worth of stuff on there and I'm at that point now where I'm basically like right I either go for round two with these same people because only so many people in the acting industry here in the UK or I seek out some people who may be lesser known, or I seek out some new people to the industry. I seek out, ultimately, the people who you want me to seek out, though. So I want to ask you tonight some questions about your career, where you are at, where you want to go, how this year has gone so far, and how together, me, you, and all of us as a community at Act On This can make each other's careers and lives better and our strongest selves by the end of this year. And that's for a particular reason. I do this kind of broadcast every year because I truly believe, but well, I don't even believe, you know what, I just know factually, the next X eight weeks, guys, are the most important eight weeks of this year. And I'll put a presentation up now and I'm going to explain to you why that is. But I need you to get your head around this 
because you've got a golden, like such a golden opportunity right now if you use these eight weeks wisely to get ahead of all the other actors, all the other people, depending, doesn't don't care what job you do, just get ahead of people in general. Um, whilst they're all kind of like heading into like a boozy Christmas wind down time of year. So let's put this up here. Hopefully uh, you can see these slides on your screen now. It says, how are you going to finish 2017 stronger than ever before? Okay. And this is what we're going to be answering tonight. All right. We've done the whole share thing. I don't even know why I put that slide up anymore. Basically, please share this broadcast. But if you've not retweeted it yet or Facebook shared it, give it a little share for me. would massively appreciate that. Um, I want to get onto this, though. We've got, like I said, eight weeks of 2017 left, all right? When the clocks go back in the UK next weekend, I think it's next Saturday night, isn't it? Like 2 a.m. that goes back an hour. We'll have just eight weeks of 2017 left to get shit done, all right? The sheep, as I have turned them on this slide, those listening on the audio experience, the sheep will begin to sleepwalk their way towards 2018, okay? The winners, however, you, me, us, will use these last eight weeks to get ahead of the pack literally for good, okay? Because you can use these two months whilst everyone else is winding down and just doing shit stuff. Uh, that's not good for them, good for their health, good for their productivity or good for their success. And you can basically start 2018 eight weeks ahead of them because they've not done anything for the previous two months. Give me some hearts on Periscope and on Twitter if that sounds good to you. If it sounds good to you on Facebook, say I because this is this seriously, this is the tactic that will um, that will change everything for you. Um, let's have a look. Andrew Alton Reed, what are you saying? Sort this today. Oh, you're talking about the the uh, the vlog. Oh yeah, and yeah, I'm going to read your email out. Well, not read your email fully, uh, Andrew, but I'm going to read a part of your email out if you don't mind because I actually am going to include it on next week's vlog as well. Um, Andrew did something really cool. I want to share the results with you guys, so it hopefully inspire you to do similar. Jamie Begg says, I, all the hearts are coming through on Twitter. Seriously, this is like, I've done this tactic every year for the last four years. It works, guys. You use these eight weeks to get ahead, all right? Let's look at how we're going to do that, and I'm going to need your input, all right, for how I can help you get ahead as well, because I think we can all help each other to get ahead, and we're going to be way stronger together, all right? Um, so I want to ask you this question. How has 2017 been for you all so far back in january you know how massive i am on goal setting you're gonna start hearing me talk about goal setting like from december onwards you're gonna be sick of it by january but it's because it's so important i'm gonna keep banging and banging and banging on about it we all set if you were on these these broadcasts at the start of this year goals to hit this year okay i want to know how have you done genuinely like how have you done do you think with your goals give yourself a mark out of 10 and, and give me a comment on on facebook or on on twitter have you hit your goals yet okay and sometimes your goals throughout the year change and some of them you might forget about others might not actually matter so you can get rid of them how many of your goals have you hit how many have you forgotten about that you could revisit in this next eight weeks and how many of you actually like how many of them still matter some of them it's totally fine to go you know what that is no longer applicable to my life thus i will throw that away you know you might have had a goal to do with a particular business that no longer exists a goal to do with a particular uh, relationship that no longer exists i surpassed some but a lot of change it's funny i've still got much to do i've survived so that's a plus always a plus andy absolutely it's good to be here didn't set that many but completed one says alex um eight out of ten for jamie jamie's smashing it man that's awesome eight out of ten is very very good um girly whirly one as in what one out of ten or you've set a goal and you've hit one ten out of ten for carry on on one submit a short story for publication and it was accepted published last month short story congrats carry man that's wicked really really good andrew's giving himself a seven out of ten um because it's important to review your goals before the end of the year if you review them now and you're not on track you can get back on track if you review them in december and go oh all those goals i set last year ever hit any no it's not a lot of time to do anything about it really you'll be starting 2018 from scratch girly whirly one goal achieved uh fanny says i've worked so hard this year and i'm working even harder now awesome don't let that up um, I've had the best year of my career so far, says Lucy, but it's just the beginning. It certainly is. Keep that up. That's awesome. So people are doing pretty well then. That's that's really, really good to hear. Nobody's like, right, I set 10 goals and I haven't hit, hit a one of them and I'm completely like demotivated. Awesome work. Okay, some more questions, if you don't mind. Um, and Jamie says, only returned to acting this year and I've already got further this year than I did in the previous 12. Fair play, mate. Good for you. And did that on this help you with any of that? Hopefully it did. <laughs> Would love to know. <laughs> 
Um, when it comes to your acting career goals, right? Because you're going to have goals in all parts of your life. Maybe you had like physicality goals this year, relationship goals this year, house goals this year to buy a place or whatever. Um, when it comes to purely your acting career goals, um, how can I help you? This is what really, I mean, like, I'm so serious about this. I really want to know this. How can I help you via the features that I can bring you at actonthis.tv? Now, that's basically down to who you want to hear from. Okay. And this is what I was saying before. I've interviewed like a lot of people over the last three or four years. And I can go and re-interview them because the landscape has changed for actors in that time. But I want to know which people you'd either like me to re-interview or which people who've entered the industry in the last three or four years. And you're like, Ross, I would love it if you had them on. Are we talking actors, casting directors, agents, directors, marketing gurus now? I think are more important than ever for actors in terms of how you can develop your social media presence um, and really you know, build a personal brand. That's what I'm doing with these vlogs. The whole reason behind these vlogs is yes, it's absolutely to show you guys behind my, you know, life warts and all, but it's to build a brand so people know more about me, are more aware of me, can see me doing good work, thus the likelihood of them employing me to do good work increases. So in terms of brand building, I think that's really important now. And that's certainly changed over the last couple of years. I want to know who people want to hear from. So, direct, Lucy, I'm going to write this down as well. Give me some votes. Like, Lucy says directors. How many people want, like, directors or other actors? Um, and do you want actors established in the industry, actors new to the industry, actors who have just landed their first telly job because you're trying to land your first telly job and you want to know how they did it? Um, let's have a look. Jamie says, it actually did. Well, Act On This helped you. Amazing. I watched one of your interviews with a casting director. I hadn't heard of him before, so I added him on Twitter. And 30 minutes later, my agent called to say I had a casting with him the next day. <laughs> That is the power of Acts on this TV, Jamie. I'm telling you, my man. It's what it's all about, definitely. So what do people want in general? Give me some, like, if you could choose one of those those categories of people there, actors, CDs, agents, directors, or marketing people, um, who would you want? And the most popular is who I'm going to get on the site next for you um, because it's important. So Fanny's on about marketing gurus. I think marketing is like, because I say the landscape's changed so much. Personal brand building, I think. Actors, man, we've never had it better than this to go. We've never had more opportunity to go direct to consumer. And in some ways, I like that better. I'm like, I don't need to get a, a TV corporation to actually give me a deal because I can just go straight directly to millions of people on YouTube um, without anyone's permission. That's what I've done with Watch Ross. So Dawn's after some more casting directors. Um, agents for Bobby, I'm guessing, although it may be different for Ireland. No, I think it's, I think it's similar, uh, similar, Bobby. And there's some great agents in Ireland who uh, who I've dealt with over here when I've been working as a casting assistant. Actors, so we've got two for agents. We've got one for actors, one for CDs. What about you lot on Facebook? CDs and anyone that can help with social media reach, says Jamie. So that's two for CDs. So we've got two for CDs, two for actors. Oh, no, two for agents, one for actors. What else? Don't be shy, people. There's at least 15 people in here right now who hasn't said a preference. Um, actors, casting directors, agents, directors, or marketing people. CDs for Sharon, so that's three for CDs. Um, there are still a couple of CDs I've not had on. I've not had uh, David Martin on, who cast the BBC drama I did earlier this year called Age Before Beauty. Um, he casts a lot of big stuff with Beverly Keogh. Um, casting directors and anyone who helps social media, says, uh, says uh, Jamie. So that's another one for social. And Fanny says social, so it's two for social. I just think that with industry professionals, it's not all the same stuff, work hard, et cetera, we need to address. Yeah, no, absolutely, definitely. That's why I try not to ask anymore the set, the straightforward questions. Oh, how do you cast? What's your process of spotlight? Bullshit, don't want to know about any of that. It's very, very simple. All that spotlight stuff is very, very straightforward. It's really about tactics and ingenious ways to get noticed without being clever and stupid. Um, but really, how for me... What I kind of want to know more of is really how you cut through all the shit and how you leapfrog over the masses to be noticed more, to be invited into the room without all the, you know, the rigmarole. Uh, let's get creative to get noticed, says, uh, says Fanny. I think, it's, I think it is. I think it's, it's, it ultimately it comes out of being business savvy, that Fanny as well. That all comes out of marketing, really does. If you're just going to be the same actor, Amy, good evening, as everyone else out there, do the same tactics as everybody else, send the same meek and mild cover letters going excuse me sorry for existing sorry for breathing any chance i could possibly be seen for a casting any time in the next 20 years um people are so apologetic it does my head in it's like actually you know what if you write to a casting director and you're really succinct and tell them what you want and you've actually got something good to offer because you've done good work um 
you're going to win ultimately way more often than you lose. Um, so it looks like really the most popular out of those casting directors for sure. Marketing seems to be good, and and so I, yeah, it's casting directors, agents, and marketers, isn't it? Directors not bothered about right now, and other actors not bothered about right now because they've already had success. Let's talk then to casting directors, uh, marketing gurus, and uh, and agents. I can sort that out. I can definitely sort that out. Let's do that. What I have got coming up though, and this is going, I think this is going to be useful because this guy used to be an actor, and now he's moved into directing. Um, and he casts as well because in the shows that he directs, he has well all, practically all the say in casting. So basically, those people will know him if you've ever worked in soap. You've probably worked with or heard of uh, this guy, Mickey Jones. Awesome guy, very funny. Um, Scouse director directs Coronation Street at the moment, but he does Hollyoaks, Emmerdale, EastEnders as well, and he's directing a JB Short. Helen says directors as well. Well, Helen, this is for you. Uh, he's directing a JB Short here in Manchester, which is like a, a, a famous like play uh, extravaganza that they do every uh, every so often. JB Shorts is um, where a lot of tele directors, uh, tele writers, sorry, write scripts uh, and they're performed live. Um, Mickey is. Um, directing one of these this week i reached out to mickey last week on twitter and was like mickey do you want a coffee um can i chat to you about stuff uh, i'm meeting him tomorrow in media city he's going to do a live broadcast with me and i don't know when that's going to be if it's going to be this later this week or early next week so alex i don't know if you read the email wrong this morning i sent out so i'm talking to mickey this uh, tomorrow about this live broadcast but it's not going to happen tomorrow it'll happen like next week um sometime potentially next thursday um I'm meeting, uh, I'm meeting Mickey tomorrow to go over it. What, as I'm talking to him about this feature and what we can address and what we can cover to kind of get the cogs turning in his head, um, what are the most important questions like I could ask him for you on your behalf? Things that maybe you're like, that might be a bit cheeky or I wouldn't ask that myself because I'm afraid. Um, he casts, um, as a director, when you, when you direct Soap, you generally always sit in on the castings for your episodes and really you you kind of have ultimate say. The casting director works very closely alongside you. So um, Coronation Street, Jenny Radcliffe or Katie Belshaw. Katie's new. She's not Belshaw anymore. She's got married. But Katie, um, she you know will have a, a, a large part in who they bring in. But I'm pretty sure the director has a big say in who they actually end up going with in the end. Um, so Mickey's got a lot of experience as a director and in casting as well for the soaps. If you are yet to have a line in a soap or a couple of lines in a soap and you're like, you know what, I'd just be well made up with like a year's contract on Coronation Street, etc. or whatever. Um, what kind of things can I ask him for you that we can then cover on the live Q&A that we're going to do next week? Um, let me know and I'll write them down now if you have anything specific that you want me to uh, you want me to cover or ask him and I will uh, I'll get you a little uh, a little answer either on the broadcast or maybe I'll just go live with Mickey tomorrow when we're actually in the uh, in Media City having a coffee does he need anyone that looks like Santa Andy's doing his yearly Santa thing Andy you look so much like Santa every year it's literally ridiculous you are very authentic white bearded Santa man he might do you know you know what I bet there's at least a couple of scenes in Corrie over Christmas that they'll be shooting within the next three weeks where there really is need for like a Santa, a Santa Claus. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not mucking around, Andy. You should absolutely right now be tweeting all of the soaps and writing to all of the casting directors at the soaps with those pictures I've seen of you as Santa saying, guys, slightly wacky question. Are you going to require any Santas in any of your Christmas scenes coming up because I'm your man? Honest to God, that's a clever thing to do that isn't a dickish clever thing to do that's actually kind of like a useful thinking outside the box thing to do seriously Andy you should do that if you don't do that I think you're missing out there um, and Steve says if he needs a scally you know where I am Steve you're totally totally scally material man you're going to be on 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 Corey or something like that very soon I'm sure is that a character like that as an aside do some big people on Twitter not have a V badge oh a verified badge yeah absolutely so there's a process you've got to go through funny as you know um you've got to go through a process to get verified um there's a lot of people who just haven't been bothered sometimes twitter end up doing it for you particularly if you're represented by a uh a, 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 what's it, a pr agency um so those who have pr which starts at about 1500 quid a month in this industry you can pay somebody literally to get you pr and get you seen and photographed and in papers etc etc if you're with a pr company they can often bypass the whole uh 
verification thing and get it get it kind of done on your on your behalf. I thought Twitter did it for you if you're big. Yeah, they do. Some so sometimes they will do, but there's a lot that just you know Twitter's got millions of users. They just can't get through absolutely everybody straight away. It'll happen eventually. Um, but that's another way to do it. But yeah, so there'll be some people who just haven't bothered to get verified if they've not been, uh, you know, been verified automatically. Um, Jamie says, does he tend to cast from a particular pool of actors or what does he feel is the benefit of casting fresh talent? They all love fresh talent, Jamie. Honestly, it's a total myth in soap and well, in any kind of casting that it's just established people. It gets boring as hell. Um, the established people obviously get the big roles because they're the roles that bring the money in and they have to be trusted to great actors. But there's nothing... Just listen to any of the interviews, man. There's nothing they like better than seeing fresh people, particularly, you know, and they can do for the one-liners and the two-liners. So if you're yet to have that, um, you're in a good, you know, good position if you reach out and you've actually got a decent showreel to show them. Um, so I'm just going to write this down. Someone asked about how often can you be in a soap? Is it every 18 months? I've been in Emmerdale as a couple of things in a closer time frame than 18 months. I think the closest it's been is around about eight or nine I went in once as a doctor, as a gynecologist, and then I ended up going in, at the, in the working in the same hospital as a guy who was beating up his wife. So if anyone was really eagle-eyed, they'd go, wait a minute, he was a gynecologist nine months ago. Now he's here knocking his wife about. Very bizarre. But it was, um, yeah, very two very, very different roles. Um, I'll tweet a few soaps tomorrow. I need to find them. Yeah, you definitely do, Andy. So the, so the soap people you want to be, be tweeting, Andy, are people like Peter Hunt from Hollyoaks, um, Jenny Radcliffe is, is Jenny Radcliffe on Twitter? I don't know if she is. Face Sty, uh, she's at Corrie, but Face Styring at uh, Emmerdale, and I don't know if Julia Crampsey, um, if she still does EastEnders, but if if she does, I don't know if she's on Twitter either. But I would definitely reach out to people either via Twitter or email, um, or if you've got an agent, definitely get them to send those pictures on because it's just you're actually really helping people out there if you give them options that they really really might be looking for right now um so that's really good um and Alex says obviously a very angry gynecologist yeah maybe he was maybe my character was very angry yeah I was called Dr Hunter and then when I came back I was just called Richard I think um so uh it definitely wasn't the same character though Alex um and and he's not got an agent at the moment well yeah I mean you know reach out yourself Andy honestly don't let that limit you mate at all without you know out without representation it really doesn't matter if you're what they're looking for you're filling a uh you know, a brief for them. They'll love you for it. So that's that's that. So I'm going to be meeting Mickey. Any other questions um, you've got for Mickey, just tweet me at Act on This TV at Ross A. Grant. Would you consider tweeting an agent with your show? Oh, is that looks like no? Definitely. Honestly, Fanny, eyes on, eyes on, eyes on. The more chance you have of people laying eyes on you, the more chance of opportunity you have. As long as you are not peppering the same person twice a day, three times a day, get out to everybody. Um, and Sharon says she's been challenged this week to contact five cast directors. Well, how many have you done, Sharon? It's Monday. Have you done one? Because you only need to do one a day, and you've done it by Friday. Um, but some say only right. I've never, I've never been one for the rules, Fanny. To be honest, um, if they explicitly say in their Twitter bio, "Don't tweet me," which is like, what is the point of you even being on Twitter? Um, don't tweet them. But if it doesn't say in their Twitter bio, don't tweet me, I hate all actors and I hate showreels, um, then uh, then tweet them. Honestly, I've never bothered. Honestly, I don't even look at Twitter profiles. I just basically, you know, it's like Mickey. I found Mickey on Twitter. I've never even met Mickey in my life. And I just reached out to him and go, Mickey, fancy doing something with acts on this? He's like, yeah. And then I just direct message him going, do you want to get a coffee this week? Yeah. So straightforward because people are just people. Like, honestly, it's just pretty easy, isn't it? Um, Sharon says, starting slow, then contacting all five on Friday. That's the challenge. Well, make sure you've got them all set up by Friday, uh, Sharon, because Friday's a day. A lot of people do half days or finish early and go for lunchtime drinks on a Friday and just have half of the day off. Get them out in the morning if you're doing that. Just be careful. You don't uh, you don't miss them and they fall into people's abysses in their inbox over the weekend. Um, so that's that. This is a big question, really big question. What is your biggest roadblock right now? And again, if you listen on the audio experience, please tweet me, all right? It's not too late for this. This is stuff that I'm going to be uh, focusing on towards the end of this year. This is all for the next eight weeks to help you guys smash the rest of the year. I'll put an example up there. This is one of people's biggest stumbling blocks, roadblocks, full stop. Are you still stuck in a shitty nine till five 
do you need help starting an online business? It's something I'm massively, massively, massively passionate about. Uh, I've done it three times already in the acts industry. I did it with a voiceover uh, training company, Acts On This and Bulletproof Actor. I'm launching a, a clothing label at the moment. You'll see if I'm if you watch my vlog. Um, I know nothing about the fashion industry, but I know a lot about online business, so I think I can generally sell anything online. If you do need help starting up an online business, is that something you would want me to cover on Acts On This and maybe start bringing on some business people, um, including myself and some other people I know within the online space? Um, and then um, it's going to get you out of that shitty job. I'm really acting to start an online business, aching to start an online business, uh, but need help with directions, says Fanny. Um, yeah, maybe that's something we should look at. Honestly, it's, it's, it was the biggest game-changing thing for me, full stop. Leaving my 9 to 5, going into online, working for myself, changed the game for me, like more than anything else. Bobby says he's got to fly. Uh, watching myself in a crime scene reconstruction at 9.35. Good luck with that, Bobby. If you can screen capture it, mate, post it in the Facebook group. Get yourself in the ads on this Facebook group. Let us see it, you little criminal. Um, and then Francis, that ties in with marketing there. No, so so brand building and actually selling the stuff online, two, two totally different things, Fanny. Branding is very different to selling. So the stuff I was talking about marketing before isn't selling. That's more like kind of br br making people aware of your brand. So it's still massively part of a business. People need to know about you or your product, but that isn't selling. Set tactics to sell are very different to tactics to build a brand. Um, so, uh, they do, they absolutely go hand in hand, but they're not the same. Uh, what does the, the what? What's that? F pace drive, F pace. What's that? What are you talking about, Sam? What does the F pace drive like? What's that? I don't know about cars. Maybe F pace is a car. Is it? I have no idea. I don't know what you mean. Let me know. Maybe it was it. Oh, Jaguar. Ah, oh, Sean's car. You're talking about the vlog. Um, it's bouncy as hell, and when Lee's in the back with the camera filming, we can't get very steady shots. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's um, it's all right. I don't drive those, Sam, to be honest. So all cars are the same to me. I could be driving around in a little uh, Morris Minor. It's all the same. Um, we all need extra avenues of income, says Jamie. Who's had an, on an idea for an online business? Anyone actually got anything right now? They're like, I'd love to do that. Just give me some ideas if you have. What would you sell? Um what would you say? Yeah, definitely funny. Shit suspension. It really is shit um, in that jag. So what, what would you sell if you had an online business? Um, and let me know. Even if you don't want to give away the exact product because you want to keep it secret, let me know what, what niche it's in. Might be in like, you know, people might be on their health and fitness gurus or supplements. You know what? Network marketing is massive. Sean, my business partner, did really, really well out of network marketing um, for Arbon. I know a lot of people kind of like are afraid of companies like, like oh, it's a con, it's this, it's that, it's the other. It's not at all. He's explained all about it to me over the last kind of three months, um, and he does incredibly well out of it. He makes, you know, literally thousands of pounds a month out of that. Um, for big kind of investment in time to begin with, but quite little now. I want to do something with mental health or online worldwide live fitness classes. It's a big one, that funny, to begin with getting traction on that you definitely got to eat shit for four years before that's gonna gonna take off um there might be something that you might be able to get a bit more cash in quicker um but if that's your passion you know what go for that honestly before acts on this really took off i'd done like five years of almost thankless <laughs> thankless work then in the last three years now eight years old it's kind of taken off quite a lot um andrew says thought about designing greeting cards that's a good one andrew it's a really good one Another business, Sean, my business partner actually set up and it's and it's fruitful. It's a really good one. What's Arbon? So Jamie, Arbon, A-R-B-O-N-N-E. -N -N -E. It's like a network marketing um, company where basically you they sell like all kinds of like nutrition and beauty products and that kind of stuff. And you earn, when you sell their product, you get commission. If you bring other people into the business, you get commission off what they sell. And then ultimately you end up with, you know, ideally a few hundred people underneath you who are all selling and you earn commission off each one. And that's what brings in, you know, really decent, decent money. It's a redirection of spend, basically. You're telling people, rather than buying your beauty products from Boots, buy them from Arbonne, and we'll all buy them from Arbonne, and we'll all end up earning money out of each other. Or I want to do something for actors with mental health issues, like a positivity, well-being uh, thing, says Fanny. It's about monetizing that, though. It's quite a difficult thing to monetize. Um, I mean, I've done it with bulletproofactor.com. Um If you create a really in-depth course with value, then you can definitely do that. But it is 
it's that's quite a difficult thing to monetize i think without a big community health and fitness business is hard yeah you're a personal trainer aren't you sam um it is difficult because it's an overcrowded space but you've got to um again you've got to do things differently to everybody else that's all you just got to do things a little bit differently and just continue to do good work time and time and time again um and eventually you know stuff will stick but if people need help with um with online business so Fanny says so everything i aim to do is hard it all is i don't care what business you want to create Fanny. it's all difficult otherwise this is one thing that I, you know what this is a bit of wisdom for you everybody right this is what i was i was thinking about this week i was like to work for yourself you know to literally ask the world to ask the universe whatever you want to want to call it to ask to actually be able to work for yourself and nobody else and earn enough money to not just kind of survive but thrive you know have a decent life that is a massive ask all right i was realizing this like earlier this week i'm like last week i was like for me to have you know to have asked for this it's a huge thing to ask for because 90 well 3% of the world employ the other 97% so for you to build a business where you can employ people you are asking to be in the top 3% of the world when it and there is like in the developed world so that's probably like in the top 0.0001% of like the world when you include everybody it's a massive ask however what's great about that when you appreciate that it's a really big ask is that all the shit that comes with it you're actually like, you know what? I kind of expect it because if it didn't come with it, everybody would be doing it. And those other 97% who are employed, you know, they wouldn't be, it'd be like, I don't know, God, they'd all be employing everyone. They actually have nobody to employ because everyone would be working for themselves. So it's a massive ask to create your own business and to actually be free of the nine till five and working with somebody else. But that's a really great thing because when you appreciate that, you're like, you know what, all this shit and this hard work, I'm actually welcoming it. And I'm like, come on, bring it on because I'm expecting it. And I know this is what I've got to get through in order to get the thing that I want, as opposed to thinking I should be entitled to have a uh, a business, um, and you know I should just be able to do it. And it's not fair. Why is no one watching my videos? Or why is nobody buying my stuff? Or why is nobody signing up for my course? Um, you're not entitled to anything. Like you're really not. You just there, there's what you here's what you're entitled to for those watching on video blank piece of paper you're entitled to literally nothing um and when you get your head around that then actually it's fine you enjoy the process and you welcome all that shit because like, you know what this is i've asked for this i've actually asked for this um thus it's okay um and fanny said something about don't you need to be like in a in a position of superiority to start a business up in something no you it's basically be an expert fanny i've said this before as well you only need to be one step ahead of the people you're teaching that's it so if you you know for instance I could be like, I know nothing about audio recording, but I do know how to, you know, I know how to basically record on a single track in a piece of software. That's it. I know nothing above and beyond that. Someone who doesn't even know how to open that piece of software or even have ever heard of it, to them, you're an expert. They will pay you to teach them what you know. And everyone on here will have knowledge in their head that they didn't have last year, that last year you would have paid to have had a year earlier. But you've spent this entire year learning shit that, you know, because you had to, that you would have paid to just have been able to, like, you know, just implant into your head a year ago. It, you know, here's a hundred pounds and I'll give you a little chip, whack it in your head and you've got all that information now a year early. You go, yeah, it's well worth a hundred quid. And that's what you're doing when you're teaching people. So you only ever need to be in business one step ahead of the people who you are serving. Um, and that's called imposter syndrome when you don't kind of quite get that and you think, who am I to start a business up in health and well-being when I only know a little bit? Um, so Fanny says, oh, well, mine is in social media then. That's my current expertise. Well, yeah. Well, you know, if you if you have an expertise in social media, that's what you, you know, start a course in, create a product in. Um, Steve says, I had that actually with editing showreels. Yeah, so you might have had a bit of imposter syndrome with showreels, Steve, going, who am I? But you would have known more than the people who you were editing the reels. Thus, you're an expert to them. Thus, they will pay you to edit their reels. Uh, there's going to be people who know more than you of course there is and then the idea is is you then reinvest that money you're earning to pay them to teach you more and then you move up a level and up a level and up a level and up a level until eventually you know you're like able to demand some really good money for what you do um but honestly if you're stuck in that shit you're nine till five please start looking at things that you could do to get out of it because you have never had it better literally with this smartphone in my hand so i was looking for my phone then it was in my hand <laughs> mental 
Um, that's all you need. You need one of these. To start a business up, you need one of these. That's it. That's all. You need this, an Instagram account, a Twitter account, something like that. That's all you need. Simple. Um, you've never had it easier. Trust me. If your grandparents heard you complaining, they'd smack you in the jaw. Uh, right. They had it hard. Trust me. Last question for tonight. What one thing would make everything else in your life easier if you had it right now? And let's look if there's a way to get you information on that. Don't just say something like a million pounds. It's not practical. If, if I could answer one thing for you or get a guest on to answer one thing for you, um, that, you know, if you went, actually, you know what, if I just knew about that or I could just learn about that, what, you know, what one thing would make everything else easier for you in your life? So, Andy, for you, it might be, you know what, if I just had an agent, it'd make everything else easier in my life because I would no longer have to send photographs of Father Christmas to people myself. An agent could do that for me. Um, money's a very general one and it's difficult to answer in just a one feature kind of thing bar if we looked at online business in much more depth over the next few weeks time for Sam all right Sam good to see you here didn't know you were watching um, so yeah so like as in so efficiency you know I'm gonna write that as well so like efficiency and productivity winning back I wonder if Michael Hyatt would do like a, a, a an actual feature for us just to like a, a one-off kind of thing he just, he's, he's, he's absolutely the man with that. Getting an agent, says Georgie. Right, so that ties in with getting agents on for features. Um, definitely. Andy says, agreed, 2018 is a year. Andy, what I'm saying is let's make the next eight weeks count, mate. Let's, if we can get you an agent in the next eight weeks, you're going to be ahead of yourself by the time you start 2018. What you might be doing there subconsciously is going, oh yeah, next year I'll get an agent. And... I'm not certain, but did you say in the end of 2016, oh yeah, agent 2017 is the year, and now 2017 is nearly over? If that's the case, don't wait till 2018. A lot of people on here will have done that. You'll have set goals, and you'll have gone, 2017 is my year. It's definitely going to be my year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you still haven't hit that goal, and we're nearly a year through, well, a, w a year from where we were. Um, let's not waste these next eight weeks going that's all right yeah i'll just sit back and do it next year because i don't think you will if that's the attitude you're going to take everyone in here we've got to use these next eight weeks to get ahead of ourselves and all those other sheep like i said at the start of this broadcast who will be um i don't have credit for spotlight hence not being able to get an agent well how can we get you know look at how we can get a couple of credits at least before the end of the year how proactive are you being, Andy, in looking to get those, you know, those credits? Um, or are you just waiting for them to come to you and you've waited another 10 months and they haven't come to you because you're probably going to wait another 10 months next year? How can we use these next eight weeks um, to look at that? And you can be proactive every single day looking for opportunities. Um, Sharon said, I got credits myself without my agent. So Sharon, can you share that information of how you did that with Andy in the Facebook group or via a private message on Facebook um, so that, you know, Again, you know, as, as a group, we can all help each other. Uh, if you've got any any tips on that, if, you know, how people have got into Spotlight quicker, then post them in the Facebook group, um, how you've actually accumulated uh, those credits. Um, Jamie says, knowing exactly what casting actually is looking for before you get seen by them. Listen to every single podcast um, I've ever recorded on Acts on This, Jamie. Just listen to those with the casting directors every casting director you can imagine has been on there everybody from andy Pryor, who cast doctor who and the a word kelly valentine henry and victor jenkins who cast Broadchurch, all the soap people from peter hunt um who cast hollyoaks uh we've had uh, kate rose james who cast things like line of duty daniel edwards who cast mr selfridge and ripper street um a huge netflix thing that he's been working on man everyone who's anyone has been on that site and just literally I don't know if you're a premium member or not, but it's 10 quid a month, man. It's like, what, three coffees? And you'll get access to what you've just asked for there, knowing exactly what casting is looking for before you get seen by them. I know you could go that down to like what they're looking for for this particular role, but there's a general set of things they're looking for before you see them. And if you can tick those boxes, you know, you, you're going to go in like a 70, 80% higher chance knowing those than if you, you know, if you don't. Now it's time to start with... Uh, uh, start of the new year I oh, missed that Andy but I think you said you were gearing up to start you've had a bit of time out good for you man but yeah let's get get back on it let's get back on it um, definitely getting on spotlight as well David's here alright David uh, one credit down but need another three well that's good man let's, let's focus on the one right it's 25% done 
you've, you've smashed it down. Let's just focus on the next credit. Don't worry about the next three. Focus on the next one, and then you're halfway there, man. And after that, you just need to do that again, and you've smashed it. Join as many local acting groups as you can. Make contact with indie production companies, says uh, Sharon. Yeah, definitely. And post in the Facebook group as well. There's quite a few people in the Facebook group who are making their own films. Um, I know there's... Um, oh, what's his face? Uh, runs Bulldog, a company called Bulldog Films. I can't remember the chap's name. He's constantly posting in the Facebook group about his short films that he's making. Um, there's quite a few people. Jack Kenner, is it, I think? He's constantly making stuff as well. Um, definitely, you know, reach out and say, look, anyone making any shorts looking to get some uh, you know some credits uh, Fanny says I know exactly what I need to do at the moment I've got steps I need to take it's a good feeling good um, is it Jack Jenner I thought it was Jack Kenner maybe he's changed his name for equity or something Fanny but um, but yeah oh yeah no Kenner yeah you said Kenner that's cool um, definitely um, but yeah have a think about like what the one thing is and then let us know in the Facebook group what it is and let's again let's all as a mastermind group guys we're going to be so much better together like You've got to help each other and swap skills and swap knowledge. We're encouraged to make our own work. Did a murder mystery night to get a theatre credit. Yeah, absolutely. Whack something, whack something on. Um, get you know, people are employing you. You know, for films, just go look. Can we get a contract together as a professional job here? Can you pay me a quid? I'm sure that still counts. When I did an interview with Spotlight, I'm sure one of the people at Spotlight said that to me literally get paid for your jobs and they still count as professional gigs the only things that don't are commercials and like um adverts they uh they don't definitely jamie says he's working his way through them think i'm talking about mind reading oh, okay jamie is in like right as if you just wish you could see exactly what they're after um yeah that's i, I can't help you with that <laughs> clairvoyancy is not not my strength I'm uh, currently working on scripts. I have a couple of other ideas for scripts. Says Andy, get to work, man. Get to work. Honestly, these next eight weeks are critical. Um, I want to end on a quote by my main man, Elon Musk. And this is a little bit of like, it's very relevant for this time of year. He says, look, if something is important enough, even if the odds are against you, you should still do it. And a lot of people on here right now, a lot of people listening will be like, oh, it's two months left of the year. You know what? It hasn't kind of gone my way. Good riddance. How many people on Facebook are like, oh, if anything else goes wrong this year? I'm like, let's not focus on all the shit that's gone wrong. It's a brand new day tomorrow. Um, let's start work on making things go well. And even if you think the odds are against you, you should still do it. You really should still do it. Um, regardless of how hard you think it is, time's going to pass anyway. These next two months are going to pass anyway. Now, you can spend the next two months in your bed hiding away from the world because it's too hard and you don't feel like it or you'll you'll do that next year when you feel more motivated or you'll start that diet on the 1st of next month or the 1st of January or you'll start saving up on the 1st of January or you'll get a show on the 1st of January. It's bullshit. Um, the odds m very often are against us, um, but let's not focus on the odds that are against us. If it's a 60-40 chance, let's focus on the 40% chance of winning. If it's a 90-10, let's focus on the 10%. Because it happens. Uh, the odds should always be against you. That way you feel like you're doing something. Yeah, Andy, you know, it's, it's gives you something to work towards. If, again, if it was super, super easy, you know, half the fulfillment for me is definitely in the process, guys. Um, but I just hope it's got you thinking about some stuff. And I promise I will absolutely um, try my very, very best to get, you know, at least another, I'd say like four features on in these next two two months. That's like one every two weeks. Um, that are premium features and that's on this, and we'll get a live broadcast or we'll get an interview in or a podcast in. Just let me know who you want me to speak to. Um, the site's got a good reputation now. It's at the point where generally anyone I ask to do something, if they've got the time, says yes. Um, sorting out my yearly plan tomorrow, says And uh, Andrew. Awesome, man. I'm collaborating on a film with folks I met on a short uh, TV film course, filming next summer. Brilliant, man. This is good. This is good. Before I go, I would just like to read you uh andrew's email here now i'm gonna have to just leave periscope for a second so apologies guys i won't be able to read matt hall's there I won't be able to read your comments for a sec but i want to read you this because andrew you deserve a little round of applause man well, i was very very happy and i've included this actually at the start of next week's watch ross vlog i hope you don't mind that um but andrew sent me an email today and it said this hi ross hope you're having a great week just wanted to email you uh, to keep you updated and to thank you listen to this right i took the plunge yesterday and went out of my comfort zone and contacted three people. 
asking them if they would be my mentor. The three are Marilyn Cutts from, is it Fascinating Ada, musical theatre performer? I'm not big on theatre, Andrew, but I'm sure I've got a picture of her. See a picture of her? She looks pretty big, pretty famous, right? Marilyn Cutts from Fascinating Ada, musical theatre performer and actor. Imelda Staunton, amazing, love Imelda Staunton. And Julie Walters, again, one of like my acting heroes, brilliant. Um, I've already had a response today from Marilyn Cutts, and she has agreed. If I hadn't done Bulletproof Actor, I would never have done this, and who knows where this will lead. What you did there, Andrew, man, is you just asked for what you wanted. And this whole thing I say every time, and you'll be sick of me, and you go, oh, it's so cliched and bullshit. When I say, you know, life will pay any price you ask of it, but it ain't going to pay you anything unless you ask. Um, what you did there is you just asked for some, Andrew, and you got it, mate. And I hope the other two get in touch with you and at least give you some guidance if they can't, you know, be a mentor full time, can at least, you know, inspire you and motivate you to move on. Um it's great. So you asked for something that you wanted, you got uncomfortable, and look, you got what you wanted, which is crazy, but a lot of people just don't ask. I promise you, if you ask, my experience has been like 90% of the time, you get at least some of what you've asked for. You might not get it all, but you'll get some of it or a lot of it. Sometimes you will get everything you ask for, but people just don't ask for enough. So just start asking. Like Elon says there, you know, even if the odds are against you, you should still do it. You should still definitely ask. The odds were massively against you, Andrew, asking those people to be mentors of yours because um, they just were. But look what happened. You did it anyway and you got the result you wanted. So I hope that's kind of inspired you. It's given me a lot of insight, guys, of what you need for the end of this year. I promise you I will do my absolute best to bring you all of that. Um, definitely. Sharon says, I'm asking people for cash for crowdfunding of Hollywood. It's a difficult one, that, Sharon, when you're not actually giving them anything in exchange. I know you're kind of um, re-diverting people who would be buying gifts and stuff for you, um, but crowdfunding is a lot easier when you're doing a film or something or a product, and you can go, right, those who support me gets an early version of it, they get a DVD, they get a signed thing, picture from the cast, scripts, etc. Crowdfunding is a difficult one where you're basically just going, give me some money, because it would really help me. Um, but have a look at how you can get a bit inventive with that and maybe throw some events, whack on some like acting networking events people can maybe pay five quid to go to, um, something where you're giving value. Jab, 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 right hook. Uh, they get to see me do well, lol. <laughs> yeah, they do. You can go look if I make it, 15% it's coming back to, back to you. Um, but yeah, um, get inventive with that. I think you, I think you can still, you know, You've got to just offer value. As Gary Vaynerchuk says, yeah, jab, 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 right hook. So that's basically give, 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 then ask. And you almost guilt people in to helping you out. You know, I know basically, I come in here twice a week because I love it, love you guys, love doing it. But I know because I just give so much value as much as I can up front for free um, that if I went, oh, guys, I'm really, really stuck and I could just do with you sharing this episode of my vlog or whatever or, you know, if you could just give me a hand with this or you know, volunteer some time for this. A lot of people on here, I would hope, fingers crossed if I've served you well, we will be like, you know what, Ross, you've kind of like done quite a lot for us for free. Um, yeah, you know, I'll uh, I'll help you out this once. And that's just like jab, 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 right hook. Kind of like just putting it in the bank. Let's go, you know what, there might come a time where I just need help. And and I'd hope people, you know, would, would reach out and, and give me that. Um, you know, I, I hope, <laughs> maybe. Um but yeah, have a uh, have a look. We'll start asking for more people. Going to be back Wednesday night for the book club. Um, we don't have uh, a. Did we choose out of Wes Lewis's book? Gone, it's behind me, isn't it? We did choose a chapter, didn't we? I think we chose a chapter that we were. Oh, and top agents, Fanny. Yeah, definitely. If you want me to get a top agent on, definitely. I'll get somebody from United or Curtis Brown or Troika or uh, I don't know, Wearing McKenna, something like that. Uh, you know, one of the bigger London agents, definitely. I think on Wednesday, Lewis Howe's book, The Mask of Masculinity, don't be put off. Let me come back on camera, actually. Um, don't be put off by the fact it's called Mask of Masculinity. This was quite a fascinating read last week when we started looking at this. It's basically about the masks that we wear when we are not acting. Because as actors, we wear a shitload of masks all the time to fulfill a certain role in society where we are. Um, you know... Everyone does, uh, but it's about knowing when you're putting a mask on and whether you would actually be better taking it off and being more vulnerable. Today on the vlog, something interesting happened. So I was in, in a coffee shop talking to Petch, talking to the cameraman, and we were talking about, I was saying, listen, I want to be more vulnerable on this vlog. I don't want to edit what I've kind of put on it. 
and I was asking him about the balance between my personal life and my pri- my, you know, my private life and professional life. Um, and um, I'll read that comment in a second, Steve. That's a good idea. Um, and I was like, I really want to show some of my, my personal life as well because I think that's me being vulnerable and actually authentic. I don't want to say, you know, a lot of people on here will like see me do these and they'll see me and act on this meet up and they're like, man, this guy's like got his shit together. And in my career, I have like professional stuff, business, career, definitely, because it's really objective for me. I can take a problem in a business and really objectively break it down and fix it. Personal side of life, whenever the heart is involved in kind of relationships and stuff like that, definitely haven't got it all together. Um, and I don't think anyone has. I really we had a conversation today. I don't think anybody has, you know, um, figured it all out. And Lee actually pressed record on the camera whilst I was talking about this, and I didn't know. Um, and I've said to him, listen, I don't want to know what really we recorded. I'm going to leave it to you to edit what you think is interesting into the vlog. I don't want to have censorship over that. Um, and I can't remember why I said that, but that's... Uh, oh, yeah, that's what I say about masks. So, you know, that's um, being... Sometimes it's better to take the mask off and be vulnerable to go, actually, you know what, I'm going to take this mask off as, yeah, I've got everything together and everything's fine. Because in many areas of my life it is. But in others, I have just the same struggles as everybody else. And I want to show that on the vlog. So sometimes, it, you know, it's better to take the mask off and just actually be vulnerable. And that's what this book is all about. And I'm pretty sure we were looking at the material mask, which is like obviously being materialistic. We might be looking at that tomorrow. The joker mask was a big one where people are kind of like joke about stuff uh, and particularly about themselves before anybody else can so they can't get hurt. That's a big one. Um, and the alpha mask was kind of like, you know, alpha male. But I think tomorrow, if you look at the joker mask, I think that's one of the most common ones I see people wearing. It's kind of like, aha, everything, everything's fine. If I laugh at myself, no one can hurt me. Um, so, yeah, we'll probably look at that on the book club. Sorry, not tomorrow, on Wednesday evening, 9 p.m. as well. Look forward to seeing the next vlog, says Andrew. Thank you, man. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube to be in with a chance um, of winning the Spotlight subscription for free next year. Um, and then Andrew also says, get out of your comfort zone. You can achieve your goals. Well, you proved it, man, this week. So um, good for you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Good to love you and leave you. It's 5 to 10. Get some sleep, you lot. Get up tomorrow. Start thinking about this next eight weeks, how you can smash it. If you've got any suggestions again after this that you just remember about how I can maybe help your features for Acts on This, um, at Ross A. Grant on Twitter, at Acts on This TV on Twitter, same on Instagram. Um, I'm going to speak to Mickey Jones tomorrow, see if we can get him to come on and do a live Q&A for us. It'll be a uh, like 100% live video Q&A where you better see me, see Mickey and then type your questions and we will answer those. Um, that will be happening sometime before the end of this month. There's only like just every week left so we'll get that in as soon as possible. Mickey is directing a play at the moment though so it might be dependent on when he's not doing that but fingers crossed by the uh, by the end. And Helen said I think she's off to watch the vlog. Do go and watch it. would love to know your feedback. Um, I'm having an absolute blast recording it and like I say you're going to be seeing more and more and more. Dawn I got your voicemail by the way. I sent you your phone, your phone case. Thank you for letting me know you got that. And apologies, it only took five months or something to send it to you. I promise whoever wins a Spotlight subscription, you won't be waiting five months. That'll be done literally first thing in the new year. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pull up Facebook so I can uh, actually end this. I always forget to do this. Apologies, guys, for like keeping you guys hanging at the end here. But I always, um, I always bloody forget, don't I? Uh, how do I do it? Not there. Oh, all fun and games. This is the bit where let's see how many people actually bother staying on for this. Uh, you never know. You might get some like crazy words of wisdom at the end of this that no one else will get if you just all bugger off. Um, Facebook's not as intuitive as it needs to be. Yeah, people. a few people have left on Facebook, I can see. They're like, forget it, Ross. I'm out of here. Uh, publishing tools. Don't go, guys. Don't leave me on my own. I hate being on my own. It's so lonely in life. Um, <laughs> it's starting. There you go. Excellent. Right. I think we uh, we are good. Thank you. Do appreciate you all being here. Look at that. So many people have stayed on Twitter and Periscope. Appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, I'll be back Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Until then, have an amazing time. And uh, if I can do anything for you, let me know. All right. Bye for now. 